Hey guys, uh, so I am going to uh, walk through some of the important concepts from the textbook chapter. So, like I said, the reason I'm reluctant to do this is because I don't want you to like just skip to just the parts I'm talking about and ignore the rest. So, if we can agree that the whole chapter is important, I'm just going to try to focus on some things and kind of help you um, with the main concepts, then um, this should help you. So, um, I always give you a study guide for, um, for uh, you know, for the final or for a quiz or something like that. So there will be that too, but I'm just going to kind of give you an overview of, of each chapter. So starting with chapter one, um, I'm doing this from, from the seventh edition of the textbook. Um, not radical differences um, between like, like six is still okay. Page numbers will be different if you go back, back too far. So, chapter one. So, the first, um, the first few pages, the point of the first few pages of the chapter is to talk about the history of computing. So, um, before there were the, you know, definitely the phones that we have today, um, even the, the computing power of the desktops and laptops that we have today, um, long, long ago, when computers were first invented, um, they were much bigger. They would fill up a room way bigger than this one. They'd fill up a room and um, for much less computing power, much less capability. Um, but the thing that has endured is that there's still just electricity at work. So um, I uh, whew, should grab my circuit board. Hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, back. Uh, got some circuit boards here. So, um, the circuit boards that we have now are just um, smaller versions of of what originally existed. Um, so, this is still kind of big, um, but this is a motherboard. And you know, as you look close, um, so these same um, you know, resistors, transistors, and then on the back. Each of these little pathways that you see, that would have been an actual wire um, traveling through. So first few uh, pages of chapter one are just kind of introducing the early days of computing. Um, uh, interesting fact, the reason we call problems in software bugs, because sometimes there were actual bugs that would, you know, mess up the computer so so yeah so anyway um so we have also learned about hardware um and uh again this is a motherboard uh this is a, a heat sink it sounds so cool heat sink um pulls heat off of a component on the board um fans also will so here there's a fan and a heat sink underneath a fan a fan and a heat sink on a motherboard underneath there is probably the if you said processor you're right so that's what would be underneath there um so again first chapters are talking about what came way 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 before this motherboard and just um, kind of helping you to have some sort of context of, of computing, specifically in terms of hardware. So that is that, um, you know, mostly a historical context. All right. So jumping ahead, um, we, um, I've got another diagram that kind of gives you an overview of how, how software works with relation to, to hardware. So that's probably easier um to review that other um diagram that i gave you in a class session so um okay so the next part i want to focus on is in in, it, in the seventh edition it's on page 15 and um it's uh computers software and algorithms so this whole section here begins to introduce um what happens when uh, when software programs are installed onto a piece of hardware so the hardware again um, components like this. This is a motherboard. Um, this is a do, 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 do. 
you said graphics card or display card or video card, you are correct. Um, so yes, this is an example of, of what one of these cards looks like. So, so these um, hardware devices, um, just really dumb machines. As though they seem so smart, they do so much, but they're just dumb machines. Just electricity runs through them on and off, on and off, just electrical currents running through. And then the software, those are the instructions that are given to the hardware. So when you type a key on your keyboard, um, a little piece of data is running to through the keyboard, cable, or wireless connection um, into the computer, and that instruction is going to do a certain, that, that keyboard stroke or the swipe on a screen or the movement of a mouse is going to do some action based on the instructions given by the software. All right, so, um, so yeah, so this section is, is starting to introduce the concept of software. So, um, in this book, page 18, but the section called algorithms, okay? So the concept of an algorithm, I'll read the textbook definition, an algorithm is a precise and systematic method for producing a specific result. Um, okay, so basically when we, in our class, we start to talk about flow charts um, and that there's a, there are steps that you follow, a process that you follow, that is the same concept as, as an algorithm. So in order to do some task in order to um, make the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You follow these same steps, okay? Um, we talk, and again, in the flowchart conversation, we talk about the sequence, a selection, and a loop. Sequence is just do the first thing, do the next thing, do the next thing, just following steps in a sequence. A selection is where there's some decision factor, some question, crunchy or creamy. Um, is there, uh, do you want jelly? Yes or no? Do you want grape jelly? Yes or no? Um, you know, all of those, you know, all of those sorts of decision points. Those are selection. And then a loop is something you do over and over again. Spread the peanut butter until you can see no more bread anywhere and then you're done. So, um, so you know, whatever those steps are until you, you, in an algorithm, you follow steps systematically in order. So with software, the whole concept of software is that we can give some exact descriptions to, um, to the computer. So through the software, affect the hardware, and then the same thing happens every time. So whenever you push a button on your phone, your screen will light up. Whenever you um, touch an app, the app will open. So, um, and then again, into more and more complexity. When you um, type something and you press save, that information goes and gets saved on a website and it gets displayed later. Um, so all of those, all of those steps happen. So, um, so yeah, so in the algorithm, you have these, these steps of the process. So, um, properties of an algorithm. There's a specified input, a specified output, and then definite, effective, and um, finite. So these are these are explaining the different types of algorithms. So you can read that here. Um, again, chapter one, page 18 in the textbook, Algorithms. That explains um, the concept of the algorithm. Again, we are visually representing algorithms in flowcharts in our class. Um, they're a good way to kind of see what those processes can look like. Um, okay, next section um, is uh, the section is called, on page 19 in, in this edition, section is called abstract, or sorry, section is called the words for ideas. And this next concept is abstract or abstract as the verb would be pronounced. So, um, so abstraction is something that people do really well. Computers don't do well at all. So if you think um, you tell a person, um, go upstairs. Well, they know, okay, they've got to find the steps. They have to walk over to the steps. By walking, you lift one foot, move the foot forward, move the other foot, move the other foot, walking, going, and then walking to the step, and then stopping at the step, and then lifting the leg high enough to go on the step, and then repeating until you get to the top of the step, and not doing that awkward thing we do when we think there's one more step, but there's not, and you kind of stumble. You stop before you get to the next step. So if you say to someone, go upstairs, they know that it takes all of those individual steps to go upstairs. So that's called abstraction. Um, and we understand that as people. We can say, um, you know, go do your laundry. And that means to um, get the dirty clothes, take them, put them in a washer, put them in the dryer, you know, all the little steps in between. Is there bleach? Is there fabric softener? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So abstraction is discussing a, 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 a construct in some high level language. 
we do it really well computers do not now what happens with um with abstraction so abstraction you're taking whatever those big concepts are those big ideas and that allows us to talk about things because if i asked if you asked me how do you get to the um well i had a client here the other day and they were asking where the restroom was and i said um i said take the key go to the front of the building look to your right and that was fine um but if um i had to say you know stand up from your chair place your feet on the floor turn walk to the door pick up the key reach your arm out grab the key, take it off, lift it up. Now, reach out to the doorknob, turn the doorknob, pull the doorknob, walk through the door. <sighs> they would not still be my client. So um, computers though need that level of detail, okay? Now, because there's software and because there's well-written software and advanced software that has a lot of functionality, we as the end users don't have to give all of those levels of detail. We can say, print this page without saying put this much drop of red ink at this spot and put this much drop of black ink at this spot. We don't have to give that level of detail because the software developers who wrote the software programs have already done that. So when you're talking about um, developing software, using software, creating a hardware device, um, the concept of ex abstraction allows us to talk about things, to talk about ideas um, at a high level before we dig down into the details. Um, those details do have to exist, but it starts with a simpler conversation using abstraction. So, um, so that's how this, this um, concept applies to what we've, we've done in class. Um, again, good discussion here, so you can read that word for word. Um, so the next piece, um, generalization, uh, I don't have too much to say about that. That's not written here, just a um, high level idea but applying to multiple situations um, and then something being op operationally attuned these concepts um, will make a little more sense again read them as they are in, in the textbook here but they'll make a little more sense when we start to talk about the interface design and how people interact with with software and then with our devices um, but again just kind of discussing ways that we approach content um, Generalization and abstraction are related to the concept of modularization in flowcharts, creating modules in flowchart. I'm going to talk about that separately. Okay, and um, page 21, um, mnemonic, a mnemonic device. Um, that's in a textbook here, um, the last um, concept of the textbook. And so this is how, um, this is just something that will, will most likely help you through um, through your um, through your time of learning about computers, um, so it's those things that we'd use to remember a, a concept. So, like um, we remember, um, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or PEMDAS um, to understand the order of operations. We'll see the order of operations when we get to Excel. Actually, it still applies, so we'll be using that later. Um, so there are all these little acronyms or like, you know, 30 days, half September, you know, a little rhyme, you know, things that, that help you to remember a concept. So that introduces that here. And, um, and yeah, that it's helpful for us to use mnemonic devices to remember technological concepts. So as you're learning, um, you want to, as you're learning technology in general, you know, so we're this intro to computing class, we're going to cover a lot of topics. And so, um, things like abstraction and, um, mnemonic devices, these things will actually help you to learn, um, to learn software. The cool thing about, you know, technology is not like, you know, like, like being out in the wilderness. If you're, if you're like in a wilderness and, and you're like starving and you're, you know, you come across some berries, like you have to already know in your head, like which berries you can eat and which berries you can't eat. Um, but technology is not really like that because pretty much anytime you're using technology, you've got you've got access to Google, you've got access to, you know, uh, you know, directories or, or reference guys, or whatever, that will help to fill in those little details. But you'll never accomplish every, anything if you have to look at every single detail every single time. So you want to kind of have these, these sort of markers, these big concepts that you have locked down into your mind. And then um, you'll be able to use those to kind of guide yourself in, in the right direction. So um, so chapter one is as much of a, a history of computing, um, introduction of some, some key concepts, and um, introduction to the, the logic behind software development, um, as much as it is a preparation for you to begin learning about, um, about computing itself. So um, 
the whole chapter is important. Read the whole chapter. But I hope that this video is, is helpful to just give you an overview of, of how, um, you know, of what's contained in chapter one of our textbook. All right. Stay tuned for the next one. Mm -hmm.